Good morning, I'm Lisa Gonzalez, superintendent of the Portola Valley School District. We are in San Mateo County and affectionately refer to ourselves as rural Silicon Valley because we're about four or five miles in from the freeway, which comes with all the livestock and all the amazing nature. Uh, we've got about 640 students, about 100 employees, and we really are in the heart of an amazing valley. We've got an educational foundation that supports all of our work and great parent volunteers in an area that's really thought of as innovative. Thus, they expect our school educators to be doing the same. Um, and it's not just uh, in technology that I'm gonna be sharing some things today, but I'm gonna be taking a look at three specific programs that we've used in our district or that we've uh, been testing out, and we've applied those to the future ready gears. So the first one I would like to share with you is something that we've, we've called the learning bus. We have about 80 students that come into our district uh, every day, traveling an hour on buses that come from another school district. And so what we were trying to do was capture back some instructional time every day. And with a partnership from Kindle, Myon, and Tenmarks, we're able to get back about two, if not more, hours every day. What we have um, is we provided Kindles to all of our kindergarten through third grade students. Uh, at home or on the bus, they're able to either read or do mathematical activities. And then when they come back to school, we're able to download all the data to let us know what it is that they're doing. And in the first five weeks of using this program, we were amazed to see some statistics. For example, we had Jose, who's a third grader, who spent seven hours and read 41 books. Or Fatima, who read 73 books in 10 hours. And the day that she forgot her Kindle said, I don't know what I'm gonna do on the bus today. We also provided parent education, which is a great way to continue to connect with our community. And this next year, because it's been uh, so actionable and so achievable, um, we are going to be expanding this to the students in our fourth through eighth grade school as well. So some tips for you. First of all, make sure that you've got clear steps and clear measures. Because this was a new program, we wanted to capture as much data as possible to show exactly what we were able to do with our students. We involved our staff and our parents. When we went out and did our rollout over in East Palo Alto, we had 16 staff members who attended, not because they were getting paid to be there, but because they wanted to be there, including our CBO. Um, look for partners. So when we started this, we talked to Kindle. We got some advice that Mayan might be interested in working with us as well. And then we found Tenmarks, which was a free program uh, that's available online. And then as much as possible, share successes. So this is a recent article that ran in one of our local newspapers and an online version as well. And it gave us more of an opportunity to not only profile that partnership, but to share our learning with other districts. A second gear that we took a look at was in the area of professional learning. And we did something fairly unique in Portola Valley and continue to build this out. But one of the things that we did was we did away with step and column for our tenured teachers. And we replaced that instead with um, an evaluation process that has three approaches to it. The first approach is uh, student performance measures. So the, stu the teachers will each meet with their supervisor at the beginning of the school year to say what area that they would like to improve in and they do uh, pre-testing and post-testing with the students during the school year. Uh, everything has to be um, reliable and again, we continue to build this out and test this. But student performance has been an important measure for our district. Uh, a second one has to do with a positive evaluation. And what we have our teachers do is they again meet with their supervisors, they look at the CSTPs for the teaching profession, and they identify two, three, or four goals that they would like to work on. And they spend the entire year blogging with their supervisor, having ongoing conversations and sharing evidence of how they're able to meet their educational goals. And then finally, what really supports that uh, even more is professional collaboration because teachers share their blogs with one another and then get that peer-to-peer -peer feedback as well. And the, the last part has to do with professional development. And this is all professional development that ties to our strategic plan. So if teachers are interested in receiving training in a specific area, they're able to get up to 1.2% uh, on top of their salary uh, toward professional development that a group of teachers and administrators have deemed is uh, acceptable for the year. And so at the end of a year, a tenured teacher could be receiving up to 3.2%. And none of these are a given. 
Therefore, we've had teachers that have aimed for positive evaluation but haven't shown the growth or haven't demonstrated uh, enough information in collaboration with their supervisor. We have some that set very high student performance measures and didn't hit those. Again, as administrators, what we're doing is we continue to collaborate and um, calibrate our scoring as much as possible to make sure that we are consistent and we are providing feedback to one another as we continue to build this out. This is an example of a teacher blog. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see the video, but what this teacher did in a seventh and eighth grade core class is she went in and she was um, collecting Illuminate data from her students. This is the first year of us rolling out Illuminate in our district. And many times what she was finding is that because the tests and the questions are asked in different ways that students aren't necessarily uh, used to, the students might not do as well as she would have liked. And so what she does is she goes back and she deconstructs the questions with them and she builds resiliency in her students by having those conversations about what worked, what didn't work, and what you can do better next time. And she's very open with her supervisor about things that really worked and those that didn't. And because I'm often um, a partner on these blogs as well, I'm able to see the rich conversations between uh, educators uh, about what it is that they're trying and where they're succeeding. And so I found that, you know, compared to a lot of the typical dog and pony show observations of going in and being able to do a lesson a specific way, we're really able to provide solid feedback and continue that learning for students, but especially for adults. So some tips for you in regards to what we've done here. First of all, look for partners in your stakeholders. Our teachers and our administrators, when we started building this out two years ago, really thought this was a great idea, so we collaborated with one another. Our board said, we're willing to try something different here, and now we're getting input from local uh, universities to better not only collaborate um, with one another, but to evaluate what it is that we're doing. Be bold to try something new. So far, we haven't found other districts that are trying this. We're not necessarily telling our story very widely yet because we want to make sure that the glitches that we find along the way we're able to correct, which, of course, leads to the next piece, which is make sure that you are able to course correct. There have been times where we've gone back into bargaining to say, you know, we really need to have more measures. We really need to take a look at a rubric to figure out what is uh, good quality and what is not, how many do we need to do. Um, so those are all pieces that we're learning as we're going along. And finally, measure and collaborate because this is, or excuse me, uh, calibrate, because this is really something our board is taking a look at. They wanted to make sure that the steps we were putting in place really were challenging enough. The final piece has to do with community engagement. And we take a look at uh, ongoing uh, communication. And I, I walked into a district where the communication wasn't as strong as it could be. So some of the things that we've been doing, first of all, we have a Twitter account that also links up with our district app. So we were finding that many of our, our families were running around with cell phones and smart devices. And by being able to have an app where we're able to communicate all the same information, um, we found that we were really able to better reach many of our audiences. Not that you can see it. This is a picture right here of the custodian. And this was really popular because it says our staff is working hard this summer in order to prepare our schools. So even when school isn't in session, we're able to tell the story about what life really looks like in the Portola Valley School District. And then what we have is we've used the technology to work smarter and not harder. So when I take a picture and I put it up on Twitter, it goes to our app, it goes to the front of our website, it goes on the Twitter feed on our website, it shows up in Twitter, and it can also be pushed out to an account that I have called Scoop It that I'll share in just a second. But I call it the five-minute communication where I can walk through classrooms, I can take pictures, I try to make sure as much as possible that students aren't identified, so as they're working on an assignment, I can take a picture over them and show them what it is that I've done. They're really excited about me not only taking pictures, but talking to their parents about it when they get home from school and letting their grandparents know that they're on Twitter. Um, only because it, it, they're able to show exactly what they've done at school as well. Uh, we also use constant contact. And what I've tried to do is manage as much of the communication as I can because it really is an essential part of my role as a superintendent in making sure our community knows what's going on. And so I'm able to reinforce everything that's important from uh, special awards that took place to student and staff snapshots that go with our Portola Valley Way, our values, which include collaboration, integrity, and respect. So I'm able to continue to message this constantly. This, finally, this is an account that I have 
and it's called Scoop It. And unlike some of the other online newspapers that are out there, I am able to personally select all the articles that go in, uh, which means that I'm able to make sure that they all reinforce the things that are important in our strategic plan. STEM, maker spaces, social emotional learning, ongoing uh, learning for all of our teachers and all of our staff. And then what I also put in is things that I think as a parent, others would be uh, interested in because as a parent, I find them interesting as well. A lot of people read the articles and I get great feedback on this, which again reinforces the message of what's going on in Portola Valley. So my tips, um, five minute marketing, even if you walk around with a phone, a cell phone, five minutes a day just to snap pictures, you have an entire array that when you need to pull something out, you have it there immediately at hand. Um, get the tech to work for you. So when you're able to hook up all these technologies, and it doesn't need to be you, but it can be somebody else in your department, um, it makes life a whole lot easier. Be clear on your messages. Because I'm doing a lot of the messaging, I'm able to really reinforce what's important, again, in our strategic, strategic plan, but also find your voice. As I mentioned last night, there was somebody who gave me great feedback on Twitter, two messages. It said, you post great things at the worst times possible, and the second piece of advice I got was, everything you post is really generic. So I stepped back and I thought about the people that I follow on Twitter and that I like their messages, and it was always more lively. So make sure you go out there and you find your voice, even if it means taking a look at someone else's and having that help craft yours. Innovation. We're all here to celebrate innovation, and we're doing amazing things in our districts. And what I, I want to share with you is the out-of-box thinking will get us really far. And opportunities like this, thanks to the uh, California First Department and First Castle, uh, Q and Discovery Education, we're able to share as much of that innovation as possible. Not that we've got it all figured out, but we're going in the right direction. Thank you.